What are the betting odds for <laughs> JJ, not JJ McCarthy, but Justin Jefferson, the arguably the best wide receiver in the league? Mm-hmm. What are the odds that he isn't wearing purple next year? So I don't know if that's something you could actually bet at a sports book right now. Um, and if it is, I don't know what those odds would be. But if I had to guess, I, I don't think there's any question in 2024, as the way things sit right now, that Justin Jefferson will start and end the season as a Minnesota Viking and play normally, you know, every game, you know, barring injury, he will have a regular Justin Jefferson season. Um, I, I think, because what you're alluding to is if you Google Minnesota Vikings right now and hit that news tab, the first 50 links that it, Google gives you is going to say something to the tune of the Vikings are going to trade Justin Jefferson or they tried to trade him in the draft or they tried to trade up for Malik neighbors. And if they had gotten neighbors, they would have traded Justin Jefferson because there's a Charlie Walters um, article tweet quote. I'm not sure, but Charlie Walters said somewhere out there um, something to the tune of that the Vikings wanted to trade up to take LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors in the draft. Um, and if the Vikings had been able to do that, that they were willing to trade Justin Jefferson after selecting that player. Um, yeah, there's a quote that there was buzz at the draft time that the Vikings wanted to move from number 11 to number five, not to pick a quarterback, but to get LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors, who was picked six by the Giants. Had that trade occurred, Jefferson would have been traded and Neighbors would have been the number one receiver. Do I think those words were never spoken ever? Sure, you could get me to believe maybe Quasi in some kind of a smokescreen type of way would have tried to flirt out like hey yeah we're trying to move up but really we like this neighbors guy we we're good with sam Darnolds. we don't want a quarterback i don't i don't think that was ever actual a factually true statement whether somebody said it or not um which there's no way we'll ever know for sure if somebody actually said that unless recording and video stuff comes out <laughs> do, you, do you think it was a legit conversation between kwesi and koc in like let's just think theoretically because again we'll never know but do you think they thought about like hey we love jj a lot he's a great guy he's been a great player for our team but there is a future out there without him uh, so and a future without the big paycheck that he's due yeah right like we could open up a whole bunch of possibilities if we get a cheap rookie like neighbors or whoever else, right? Yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. So there were a lot of options mm -hmm. that way, right? I, so I really think, honestly, for every player in every position, there's a number. Whether it, you could be peak career Tom Brady, there is a number that the Patriots would have accepted to trade him away at. Yep. And if there's not a number for a player, then a GM, it shouldn't be the GM. If you don't have... A price because if somebody comes up and offers you the next 30 first round picks for a guy I don't think that would be you know approved by the league but if somebody offered you 30 <laughs> first round picks for a guy I don't care who it is you're you're taking that offer somebody yeah. there is a price for everybody and I truly believe for every player even right now for JJ McCarthy like the Vikings have or at least are willing to think about and name a price for every player on their roster. I would bet, and this is crazy and conspiracy and would never happen, it's almost not even worth saying. I would bet Quasi has a price for what he would trade Kevin O'Connell away for. You oh, know what sure. I mean? Like yeah. everybody's up for grabs. We've seen head coaches traded in the league before. Doesn't happen really ever. You could probably count on one hand how many times it's happened. Um, it would waste time to try to Google it. But like I know John Gruden back in the day was traded from Oakland to Tampa Bay. It happens. So if a GM doesn't have a negotiable price for everyone in the organization, um, then that's a misstep and that GM's not doing their job correctly. So do I think, yeah, 
Kwesi has a number in his mind right now for or a scenario that he would actually be willing to trade JJ for. Yes, I'd, I'd bet a trillion dollars. Jay or Kwesi knows at least the first step of the negotiation. Um, do I think they were actively trying to make that happen, or that was their plan A? Maybe that was plan B, C, D, E, F, whatever, but I don't think that was plan A. I don't think that was ever something they were actively trying to make happen. Well, and you sent me the the draft room, war room uh, video that the Vikings put out. Yeah, like a week um, or so like ago. Like a week yeah. ago, yeah. And I was really busy. I had a lot of stuff going on, so I didn't have a chance to watch it right away. But I watched it mm-hmm. recently, and... Uh, I I agree with you. I don't I don't think there was really any other plan than to go get JJ as quickly as they could. JJ McCarthy, mm-hmm. that is, um, and then see what else they could do. And when they still had that eleventh pick to go get uh, Dallas Turner, like you the twenty so, third pick. Or sorry, uh, yeah, the twenty third pick. Um, when they still had that pick, and he was still there. You saw it on Kevin O'Connell's face in that video. Yeah, He's just kind of really like, what? <laughs> yeah, we got him. No way. So yeah, I I would agree with you. I I think, um, yeah, there was probably a scenario and there was probably a number, mm-hmm. um, but it was pretty far down the the list of possibilities. And that's a like, you're throwing a hail mary. Things are not going our way on draft night, and we got to do something. Yeah. But I also think the idea of trading Justin Jefferson, that's not something you you do in the heat of draft night. No. What If that's something you're okay with, then you have your, your plan on, okay, if these 10 things happen or whatever, if this scenario happens and also we have the ability to make these other things happen after that, then we would entertain it. I Just out of being a businessman, I don't think, I think it would be crazy to say, these G for any GM for any team and any player just would never say absolutely not for any player. Like the most elite of Pat Mahomes has a number. The chiefs would accept something for Pat Mahomes, you know, like I don't know what it is and I don't think anybody would be able to afford it, you know, but like the chiefs would accept something (laughs) like there's gotta be a number. And if they wouldn't, then that GM is not the smartest he could be. Um, Let's play pretend here. Let's pretend that we know for a fact the Vikings would trade Jefferson. Let's say ESPN has reported, Quasi has come out and said, we're open for business on Justin Jefferson. You know, let's enter that make-believe world. Let's say why it would make sense, and then we can go back and say why it wouldn't make sense. But to you, why would it be good for the Vikings to trade away Justin Jefferson right now? Well, it would be really hard, again, to watch another really good player leave the purple and gold. The second time in our lives, arguably third, but definitely second, to watch our favorite team trade away the best wide receiver in the game. Yes. Yeah. Um, But the good would be it would open up a ton of space in the salary cap uh, down the road. Maybe not immediately. Because he's really cheap right now as yeah. far as yep. a starting wide receiver. even Not just Pro Bowl. Like he's cheap for a starting wide receiver. But correct me if I'm wrong, he still has another year before the Vikings have to do anything with his contract. Right? Signing a contract now. Let's say they do that over the summer this year, summer of 2024. That's a move in favor of Justin Jefferson. That's the Vikings saying, we believe in you. We want you here. Uh, if we make you the highest paid non quarterback offensive player in the league, it's because we want you here and we want you here for a long time. Mm -hmm. Something they have come out and said they want to do. Correct. It just hasn't happened yet. Correct. But they don't have to do that right now. They can wait. They can wait until after this season. Right. I think, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty confident in this. He was drafted four years ago in 2020. Every rookie who's drafted gets a four-year contract. First-round picks get a the team option, option of a fifth-year option. Yes. Um, something teams have to say that they're going to pick up, I think, before the player's third year. Um, and obviously, the Vikings picked up Justin Jefferson's fifth-year option. So that would make yes. 2024 the fourth year of his contract. 
and 2025 would be that next season as that option. fifth year option. And that fifth year option is when he starts making pro bowler type money. Not even like all pro, you know, not top of the top, but pro bowler type money. Yep. FU type money, you know, as far as NFL players are concerned. Mm-hmm. So I may be wrong. I don't think I am, but I might be. The Vikings hold Jefferson's rights contractually for the next two, two seasons. seasons. So for the next, what, 35 games? Or what is 17 times two? This is super easy math. 34. 34 games. They hold his rights. Um, now, every player has a right to hold out and miss out on contract money or fake an injury or skip voluntary OTAs. You know, players have a little bit of tactics in what they're able to do. However... So last season, Justin Jefferson, he did skip the voluntary OTAs. So far, we're in like week two or week three. Tomorrow, you know, by the time you're listening to this, the Vikings will have started another week of voluntary offense or what? what Organized team activities. Yep. So as of that right now, these are all voluntary things. There might be some players who have some contractual boosters built into their contract to show up for workout workouts and stuff, which would be these voluntary times. But I don't know if Justin does. He hasn't been last year. He didn't, he hasn't been so far this year to these voluntary portions. However, last year he showed up first day of the mandatory team activities, uh, training camp and everything. And the first day, you know, stood out and answered questions. I watched the Vikings video of people interviewing him outside after practice being very open, very honest, Justin Jefferson and the Vikings, neither of them has said or done anything to make anyone think there's some ill will or that a deal might not get done. The only thing is that literally a deal hasn't been done yet. So that's the only thing. And I wouldn't say the only thing, because I think one of the biggest things Justin has been waiting for is what will the Vikings do at quarterback? Maybe. And what, what we don't know is how he feels about J.J. McCarthy. and Publicly how he, yet. How he feels about Sam Darnold. And we may never know how he personally feels. He may have a really good script that he's going to fire out there whenever there's a microphone in front of his face and he's mm-hmm. you know giving those public remarks. But... Um, that was the storyline all season last year. Oh, yeah. Is, How does he feel about Kirk leaving? Is he going to leave if Kirk leaves? Yeah, that all of that. Well, mm-hmm. and even before Kirk left, it was the writing was kind of on the wall that Kirk would maybe leave, especially when Kirk went down and was out for the rest of the season. Um, but And during that time, J.J., every chance he got, would almost go out of his way to say, I love Kirk. Kirk yes. is my man. He yep. put the top 10 chain around his neck, which I chalked that up to. One, he really does like Kirk Cousins and really likes him as the guy throwing him passes. And two, J.J., who he's proven this outside of Kirk, is a good teammate and a good Viking. So yeah. he's just – he's a good dude. So yeah. all of that mixed together, that's why we're seeing, oh, does he love Kirk so much that he wouldn't want to be on, on the Vikings without him? I don't – I think that's a little far-fetched. But I don't know. It could be could be their truth. Speaking know. Speaking of far-fetched, this may be really far-fetched, but I just had the thought while we were talking all of this out. Is there a, a hypothetical? Because we just got done saying everybody has a number. Every team has a number. Every player has a number. <laughs> Do you think the Falcons have a number for JJ? Do you think the Falcons are like, well, yeah, if the Vikings would give him up for this. Yeah, I think I, that's the flip side. Everybody has a number for what they they would take for one of their players. They probably have a number for maybe not for every player in the whole league, but they probably have a number for what they would at least start off the conversation with for any other you know decent big name player. Um, that's why these teams scout everybody so much, whether or not they're going to draft them or sign them, because you never know. Three years down the line, maybe you need a quarterback and Josh Dobbs is available. What information do we have on him? Oh, we mm-hmm. liked him. Can we back it up, see if that's true, false, now, or whatever? So, yeah, I, I would imagine the Falcons, just like any other team, has an idea of what they would enter the conversation with for Justin Jefferson, whether the Vikings would ever even pick up the phone, which they should because you should pick up the phone for anybody because you never know. could it's, be 30 first-round picks. It's, it's always worth a conversation. Absolutely. And then it, at worst, you can just say, nope, not at, interested, it's a business. and move on. Because as far as I know, there's nothing against like GMs talking to other GMs about 
players on their own rosters. Now, obviously, if a coach comes in a press conference and says, yeah, that that guy on that other team, I really want him. Like, I, I don't know what they're doing on the front office end, but I want him on our – like, that would break some rules. Like, that would be crazy. I really just wanted to drop in another money ball <laughs> quote, but I'm, I'm going to refrain from that. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Anytime we talk about GMs and trades, that movie just, like – flashes right to the front of my brain Mm -hmm. so we've gone down a a really long rabbit trail from the original question which was what are the what are the pros to letting jj go so just kind of restart your your answer there yeah so i initially said and i stick to it would open up a lot of room in the cap for the vikings in the future not necessarily right now because as we established he's cheap he's we think probably on his fourth year rookie deal yeah and they exercised the fifth year on his rookie deal so he's a viking for this year and next year Mm -hmm. unless something dramatic happens um so um but beyond that fifth year of next season the 2025 26 season um i think it opens up a lot of possibilities that the vikings won't be on the hook for a 35 plus million dollar a year most expensive non-quarterback offensive player in the league type of player Mm -hmm. um which opens up options in free agency it opens up options in the drafts it opens up opportunities to trade um there's there's a lot of things there that are good if jj justin jefferson that is is not a viking so that's that's my big kind of takeaway yeah If, if he's not it would be hard for me to see him play for another team but. absolutely so my pros are probably going to be exactly what you just said it would be a historical haul yes um think what the vikings gave up in the early 90s for uh, herschel walker the mm-hmm. vikings would receive yeah maybe it, it would it wouldn't be 30 first round picks that it would probably wouldn't even be three first round picks but it might be two you, plus it, you're looking at it from plus the opposite, like a starter you're looking at it from the opposite side what did the vikings get if he's not there yeah, and i'm looking would, at what what did the vikings like what aren't the Vikings on the hook for exactly. if he's not yeah. there? But yeah, I mean, so that's what what they're not on the hook for is an option or something to think about. But they would also, it's not like his contract would run out, right? Uh, so they would get a haul for yes, him. Um, they would be very well set up, have at least two more first round picks in the future, plus probably some other picks, plus maybe a starting level player or two. It would be a nice a nice haul for him. Um, and like you said, he would save future cap space. Uh, I would argue that by, it sounds like next season, the Vikings are set up a year from now to have a pretty decent amount of cap space, which again, if you sign, if you sign uh, Justin Jefferson, that amount of cap space available get, goes down, but you also have Justin Jefferson locked up long term. Uh, so there's give and take there. Um, and I guess if if Justin Jefferson did leave, it would open the door on the field for other players to get more opportunities. So you'd probably see Jordan Addison, what he could do as a number one. In the theoretical scenario where Justin Jefferson's traded, the Vikings would do a lot to draft a Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors type top of the draft wide receiver in the next draft after they traded him. Uh, so you would see some exciting younger guys. JJ is still pretty young right now. What is he? 23, 24. 24. He's still super young. Um, and it, or Aiden, uh, uh, TJ Hawkinson, the logo, he would get more, more options as a receiver, but when healthy, he still gets plenty. Um, that's kind of it for, for pros for me. Like you'd get a lot of capital you wouldn't be on the hook for a bunch and then other guys could step in to fill that role um but a pro or a con what do you what do you think the cons would be um i mean obviously you're giving up one of the most talented players in the league um i mean he led the league not last year because he was injured uh for part of the season but two years ago he led the league in receptions and yards Mm -hmm. and uh yards per game on average like and and he he got he got the – I can't think of the word. So the MVP has basically just become who's the best quarterback. Yep. He got the the best uh, non-quarterback <laughs> player in the league award as the offensive player of the year. Anyways, yes. 
Well, he was uh, fifth in the MVP voting. Yeah, yeah. He was the AP Offensive Player of the Year and uh, a Pro Bowler. Like he had a ton of accolades um, two years ago. In addition to leading the league in all of the key receiving stats, pretty much. So that's what you're giving up. You're giving up, arguably, when he's healthy and ready to go and has a good quarterback throwing the ball to him. You've got the league's best receiver. That's a what you're sure commodity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's that's tough to get rid of, right? Like it, it's tough to walk away from that. So absolutely. And and it's tough to bet on what you could get in return for him, and tough to bet on the players that could possibly fill that role like you mentioned Hawkinson and Addison like yeah sure they're they're great players but can they be league leaders can they and not even that like those things don't matter right ultimately if you don't make the playoffs and don't get to a Super Bowl the only thing that matters is Super Bowl wins absolutely so yeah I'm famous for saying that I don't care about anything wins and Super Bowls you could have a roster full of players that don't lead the league in anything but get you to a Super Bowl. And mm-hmm. That's what matters the most. Absolutely. So there is this kind of give and take, and that's it makes being a GM these days so challenging because there is such a wealth of information out there. And like you mentioned a little bit ago, like teams probably have these just full profiles on these guys, like almost every guy in the league, and there's got to be a database more than – pro football reference that we look at mm-hmm. <laughs> as fans who are cheap and don't even want to pay for anything more I, than this. I will say if you know what you're doing on pro football focus and you look at the players, the Vikings drafted the last really two drafts. If you look at those two things and think Quasi doesn't have the highest tier pro football focus membership and <laughs> pays attention to it, then you're dead wrong because <laughs> he definitely does. Cause all of those players are high tier for yep. where, who they are and where they're drafted and everything like that. Anyway, sorry. Oh, I, I absolutely think that analytics plays a, a huge role in how these GMs make their decisions and they have to, right? Because at the end of the day, their jobs are, did you make the best possible decision with the information that you were given? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to quote Moneyball here. Do it, man. Do it. I have to. I'm never going to tell you no. Do it. But in the mood, I've, I've, I bring this one up all the time and you know, you sit, you sit in those living rooms and you tell those parents when it comes to your son, I know. And you, you don't. (laughs) <laughs> you don't right like that's being a gm in the days of old mm-hmm. and that's not being a gm today in 2024 when we even us uh fans casual we sit here and drink beer and talk about <laughs> sports for an hour once a week and mm-hmm. publish a podcast about it like we can see some pretty in-depth analysis into the on-field production for these players. Um, we do need to make a correction. Uh, oh. JJ's going into his fifth season. Oh, okay. He's played four years. Oh, I, I guess I looked over. He was drafted in 2020, so then it starts at 2021. So I looked over the 2020 year. So 2024, we'll, yeah, you're right. So Yes, so he has played four complete seasons mm-hmm. he was drafted in the spring of 2020 and then he played his first game in the fall of 2020 that's where we need jimmy we need, the stack we guy. Need stack hey guy. jimmy i need the the stats on jj's <laughs> uh, contract thanks anyways um <laughs> but all of that to say and that's just a minor correction to make sure that we're on the record as being yep yep uh, Thank up you to for date and up. correct all of that to say like even we have access to this and of course uh GM for a what we would say is a top tier <laughs> NFL franchise. If Vegas doesn't agree, but <laughs> screw Vegas. Uh, of course, Quasi's going to have the top subscription to every, and, and maybe the NFL gifts all 32 GMs with like, hey, we'll give you every single thing we have to make it a level playing field. I don't know. The these GMs probably have. So if the if the highest. Uh, level of subscription for PFF was like if they called it Premier. I don't know what they call it, but if they called it Premier, these NFL GMs they probably get like 
super ultra elite premier <laughs> and the coaches might only get like ultra elite but the gms they get super ultra you know <laughs> and, and we get the standard I, I will see yeah, exactly um so i will say it's not it is a huge correction uh that he's already played four seasons because he's going into his fifth year this is his year this where he's it. making yeah. starter good player money and the Vikings technically only have his rights for this coming season, 2024 season. However, the franchise tag exists and they could tag him for the 25 season, which would be a very expensive tag at that point. If you're going to tag that guy, just sign him and pay a little bit more per year just to lock him down. But I mean, Kirk cousins with Washington, they tagged him twice. So that's something that could happen. Now, tagged players they can just not show up without any penalty whatsoever until like week 10 <laughs> so that that would suck <laughs> we saw I'm the vikings here, without so jj for a while fined. and if that's something that a player has in their pocket I, I touted jj as being a very good guy not a locker room cancer good for the community good for everybody says all the right things if he gets tagged and he didn't show up until week 10 I wouldn't fault him because I also say these players should fight for every dime they can get in their playing years, especially a historical player that JJ is on track to becoming like Correct. he needs to fight for every dime he can get. It, it will suck if that means his fight means somebody else other than the Vikings pays him those dollars. Uh, but I think the Vikings will. Were you good on cons? Did you have any more cons for, tr- no. for um, keeping Jefferson? No. All right. So I'll, I'll just go through my list just because I wrote them down. Um, cons, obviously, you'd be getting rid of one of the best players in the league. Not just the best wide receiver, but one of the best players. Somebody the league puts out there as a marketing icon. Um, even if you got the next – if you got five first-round picks, which that they wouldn't get that for anybody. But even if you got that, how often do we see first-round picks bust out? I mean, if you got five Laquan, Laquan Treadwells, like – that's as good as giving just Justin Jefferson away for free. Like you're not first round picks are not guaranteed to be good. JJ McCarthy included Dallas Turner included um, Caleb Williams included. Nobody's guaranteed to turn out to be a good player. That's why the term bust exists and the Vikings have had their fair share of busts. So you're not guaranteed to get requisite value. If you trade him away, Um, JJ, I've said it a few times now, it's not like he's a locker room cancer. He's not a, a Stefan Diggs with his hood up covering his face trying to pretend he's <clears throat> sick or something because he's upset with how many targets he's getting. JJ has only ever been a positive outside in the public presence. Um, in the media, we've never heard Justin Jefferson uh actually hates Kirk Cousins. Like we've never heard anything bad. I think the only negative thing we can ever point to is one time like three years ago towards the end of a game, it may have been a critical point in the game. Kirk held on to the ball for just a second too long and he like overthrew Jefferson or threw to somebody other than Jefferson. And it happened to be a game that Jefferson was mic'd up and you could hear something the like F Kirk yeah, something. throw the F in ball or throw yeah. the ball, Kirk, or something. Like you could hear something like that. And that's in the heat of a play. Yep. And I he may have already addressed that in the past. It was years ago. That's the only thing we can think of that's like, oh, maybe Jefferson doesn't love Kirk. Jefferson has gone out of his way to be a good teammate, at least publicly. We can never know what these guys are like behind closed doors. But I feel like if he was an awful person, even if it was, you know, perfect in public and awful behind closed doors, we would hear about it, right? You would hear like, oof, yeah, this dude is tough to work with. We've never heard anything bad about him. So he's not a locker room cancer, not a community cancer. Um, he. I mean, just last year, right before he came back from injury, he was at like a Toys for Tots event. And one of the kids was like, are you playing this week? And he was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'll be there. So, like, he's a he's a good dude or at least knows what to do and say. Um, there's already a lot of cap space next season or coming. And, yes, like I said earlier, if you sign JJ, that takes up. We need to figure out what we're going to do as far as the term JJ. So maybe we just need to make it a point to just say Jefferson rather than JJ. That's hard, though. I know. Justin has been 
JJ since he landed in Minnesota four at, years at ago. At least to us. But apparently it, when he talked to JJ McCarthy, he told McCarthy, like, no, it's all it's all good. I go by Jettas or whatever. So like I don't maybe we're the only you know, the fans are the only ones that call him JJ. <laughs> but we've been doing it for four years now, so um but if you sign Jeff, Justin Jefferson, that eats into that cap space. But that's what it's there for. Like, yeah. you you have this space to be able to fill a roster, and some of these players cost more because they're really good, like Justin Jefferson. So I'm not worried about him taking up a lot of the cap space. He's going to. Speaking, speaking of the cost, and maybe this is kind of how we end our discussion around this particular issue, um, you were interacting, or at least uh, mentioned, uh, Leighton Glodick on Twitter oh, earlier yeah. today. Go follow that guy. What's yeah. his What's his handle? L G L O D E K. He he L puts Glodick. out great stuff on Twitter, on TikTok, maybe on Instagram. He he puts out great, great, great Vikings content, Agreed. videos. It's awesome. Anyways, yep. keep going. He's worth a follow. We'll uh, we'll mention him down below in the. The description as well we'll make sure to do that yep. but um he made an interesting comment uh he he had a thread of things going on twitter about the justin jefferson situation and all this kind of hoopla around is is justin jefferson gonna leave the vikings are they gonna trade him blah 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 the whatever clickbait deal because yeah it, it is kind of a clickbaity issue um but he seemed to have a very level-headed approach, and that's where you kind of interacted with him and just kind of thanked him for mm-hmm. like, yeah, thanks for actually just giving us the news and not just like the clickbaity thing that gets everybody all riled up. Yeah. Um, but he made an interesting comment. He said, Jefferson and his team are likely awaiting C.D. Lamb and his contract with the Cowboys to kind of see how that all shakes out before the Vikings and Justin Jefferson sign their agreement because it's, it's kind of widely known because he's so good and because he's arguably the best. And I think we looked at the stats kind of head to head between yeah, CD yeah. Lamb and, and Justin Jefferson before we started recording. It, it's kind of Justin Jefferson and then everyone else. I mean, yeah, but CD lamb is CD? right next to him receiving stat wise. Yes. CD Lamb and Justin Jefferson are very far close. apart as far as their receiving stats. Lamb, I mean, if if you were a diehard Cowboys fan talking to me, a diehard Vikings fan, if you were trying to say just off stats alone, Lamb is a better player overall. I mean, if it's, I was just looking at numbers, it'd be hard for me to just straight up argue because Lamb he does get. He, sprinkles in a little bit of the rushing game a he little does. bit i mean what's he got 42 attempts in his four years so i mean you're talking 43. 10 attempts a yeah. year um so obviously he has more than jefferson who has what 10 12. rushing attempt 12 yeah um and lamb does flash a little bit more or at least has in his career in the returning game kick and punt returns i don't know how much lately um and then of course the cowboys vikings head to head since they both enter the league lamb uh, the vikings haven't beat the cowboys <laughs> since Correct. since jefferson entered the league but I, I still don't think there's much of an argument that jefferson is the best wide receiver in the league right now so jj is better in terms of yards total yards um it's 5899 for mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson and 5145 for CD Lamb and um reception yards per reception JJ has 15 yards per catch whereas CD only has 13 okay uh and then in terms of fantasy points which i mean that's a, that's a thing i it's mean it's a thing yeah. it's it's a measurable yeah thing that it's a takes metric. account of like yards catches touchdowns i mean it's yep, like it's a, a total sum of everything boiling yeah. things down to one number uh jj gets that as well at 783 whereas cd lambs at 760 okay um so still really close like yes jj comes out on top again if you want to throw in the returning and the rushing stuff Sure, but maybe. Some of that just comes down to offensive system. Exactly. Right? Like We've seen JJ rush the ball. It's just he's yep. not asked to a lot. And yep. thank and, goodness. Cause and <laughs> Dallas is maybe giving the ball to some of their receivers more often than, yeah. than we are in Minnesota. And that's fine. The other interesting thing to note is CD's got six more games on Justin Jefferson, and yeah. that's due to injury. He yeah. sat out for six games. And I wouldn't, I don't think we're even close to saying JJ 
Justin Jefferson is injury prone yet. Um, now, if he has another six, seven game stretch this year where he has a hamstring injury or something, that's going to be the talk of Jefferson's career too. Like, oh, is he an injury prone guy? Um, yeah, I think it's too early. But again, to get back to your point, Leighton does point out something I hadn't thought of before, and maybe it's common knowledge. I don't know. The Vikings might just be waiting, and JJ or Justin Jefferson might be content waiting to see what CD Lamb gets. Because obviously Jefferson is better and should get more. How embarrassed would Jefferson's agent be? And for all I know, they're the same person. Um, but how embarrassed would Jefferson's agent be if CD Lamb ended up getting like five million more a year than Justin Jefferson when it all shaked out? Um, yeah, I don't know. So it could just be a waiting game, and it's something that doesn't happen to have to happen this second. But I'd be a lot more <laughs> comfortable if it happened sooner rather than later yeah it would be nice to just get that resolved and yeah. get rid of these clickbaity headlines and all of the like oh did you hear what happened to justin jefferson <laughs> well no nothing's happened with him yeah yet. No, like, no, we're good. just <laughs> calm down sim it down but yeah uh to your point leighton glodek i'm sorry if i'm not saying that name right solid 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 social media follow puts out really good content especially on tiktok even not just specifically vikings but some good entertaining voiceover content with some video and stuff but yeah i i really appreciated his level-headed common sense tweet thread of tweets about like hey guys this i mean jefferson it's okay he's not getting traded don't worry at least not right now like we don't have to freak out because there's some clickbaity headline going around it will be interesting to see how that all kind of shakes out in the offseason. And I wouldn't put it past the Vikings to make a splash or two in addition to that. I think that will be a splash in and of its own. Um, whether they choose to do that this offseason or wait until next offseason, I think they have the, the, the team has the right to wait mm -hmm. until next offseason. That'll be cutting it a little close. I mean, that would be that would be the line. Like, <laughs> right. He's... He's not, no longer under contract as of, what, March? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like... So, it, yeah, that would be interesting to see. But it would be nice if they just took care of that, moved on one way or the other, right? Just, yep. we're, we're rolling with this guy. He's going to be a Viking for a while. Or best of luck, we're going to find someone else. Yeah. To, to kind of go with a little bit of the theme of one of our segments today, if I was betting, you know, by kickoff against the New York Giants week one for the Vikings. If I was betting yes or no, if the Vikings had a long-term contract with JJ or Justin Jefferson, I'm, I'm going to try to just say Justin Jefferson rather than JJ from now on. And I've totally messed it up the whole episode. Um, <laughs> but I would say, yes, I'd bet that yes, they will have a, a long-term contract sign resolved not even an issue by the time they kick the ball off against the Giants on week one. And that maybe I'm hopeful, maybe I'm just a hometown, you know, homer or whatever, but I really think this is too big of a deal. This is a fireable offense to not get Jefferson re-signed. Well, it should be the only thing Quasey's thinking about right now after the draft and everything. That should This should be his number one priority. And, and I think it is. I, I would hope it is, too. Um, yes, I, th I think it is wise to wait and see what happens with the other wide receivers. Um, Absolutely. But there, there could be, and maybe I'm way off in left field on this, but there could be a small chance that they're waiting, like, to do this in the middle of the season yeah, man, and that, like that kind of too close though. revive a little bit of the PR around the Vikings. Like let's say that the Vikings lose five games in a row. Well, okay, let's, let's push this out and let's see if we can at least get people talking about us again. And mm, I, I, I could see that. Hopefully that I'm, I'm hopeful that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that could be an option and that could be something that, at least the team is thinking about i think justin jefferson would cringe at that thought like why are you using me as a pawn to yeah. increase your publicity when we're playing poorly i'll say this like i just said confidently they'll have a deal signed by the first game of the season 
I'll worry. Like, I'm not worried until kickoff. Kickoff. And then if they don't have a deal signed, it's like, we're in the season. Like, how many times do we hear, like, a a high-profile player saying, like, I'm just going to not negotiate until after the season's over once, you know, the season starts because I only want to focus on football. Like, I'll be – I won't be worried until then. And then if they enter the season without a deal signed – then I'll be pretty worried. Not like, I don't know. Like, I'm going to be actually, like, almost angry. That That's how worried <laughs> I'd be. Like, probably angry. Not just almost. Like, I'd be pretty angry. Yeah, I don't know. The, it'll it'll get done. That's this, probably the biggest storyline for the Vikings from now until the season starts, though. Other than, how's JJ look? I mean, that's, that's McCarthy, it. McCarthy, that is. Yeah, well, yeah, that's <laughs> officially... At least Austin, skull hop wise, if you hear me say JJ from now on without correcting myself, if you hear me say JJ, I mean JJ McCarthy. It, now I might confuse the piss out of a lot of you talking about JJ's receiving <laughs> stats this year. No, no, I'm going to try really hard just to say Jefferson until we get something where like we hear from Justin Jefferson, like no, 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 guys, I. I want to, I've wanted for years everybody to call me Jettas or just call me Justin or I as a fan on this podcast if I say JJ I mean JJ McCarthy. I mean they're both five syllables. Is it really that much <laughs> to just say all five syllables? Oh, yeah. We're we're getting down to the end of it. Yeah, we got enough for uh, one more skull. Yeah. All right. It's been a good episode. Agreed. I've had fun. Agreed. And we mentioned it a few times I think already in the episode, but come follow us youtube spotify uh we're on facebook twitter instagram Mm -hmm. and we're pretty much everywhere if you just give us a google we've even got a website out there so come on and check us out and we'd love a follow wherever you like to engage with this type of content and we'll follow you back and if you drop us a comment we'll comment back absolutely we're doing our best to stay interactive and yeah. Support the Iowa beer community and support our favorite team, the Vikings. And and if you like merch, I mean, hey. Evan's repping our t-shirt right now. You can get a couple of different colors. That's right. We got a nice little flag below us. Uh, this helmet on our desk, that's a custom made deal. But if you want it bad enough, let us know. Send an email to skullhop at theskullhop at gmail.com. Everybody's got a price. Out. Yeah. We, we've got a price. Yep. We've got a number for <laughs> so, yeah. this guy right here. We got it all. So if you like us, let us know. If you hate us, let us know. And if you want some merch, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have an extra t-shirt and we've got a few other yes. things. We've got some stickers on hand. So a, a giveaway will be happening. It's just, we need to figure it out. Yeah. We've got a business meeting coming up. We'll figure that out. We will. We all will. right, man. Best episode yet. It's cool. It's cool. Hey Vikings fans, Evan here from the Skull Hop and we just wanted to say thank you again so much for listening to the Skull Hop and we also wanted to take one more opportunity to let you know that this episode of the Skull Hop has been brought to you by Big Top Ventures. If you're considering taking an all-inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica, reach out to our friends at Big Top Ventures at BigTopVenturesLLC at gmail.com. Once again, that's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. You can get the lowest rate possible on several all inclusive resorts throughout the region. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. And thanks again for listening to the Skull Hop. Skull. <laughs>